again and welcome to you all for this uh, communication track. Uh, just to present myself, uh, so I'm from a company called Biointelligence Service. Uh, we're based in Paris with about 75 consultants and our focus is sustainable production and consumption. We work equally for private companies and public institutions. Uh, just to mention a couple of assignments we've carried out recently. Uh, obviously, this, this year we've been involved in the French uh, national experiment on environmental labeling. But for example, we've also assessed all the different biofuel supply chains in France uh, over the last years to provide some uh, concrete elements uh, to policymakers. Uh, we've just assessed the carbon footprint of the city of Paris. We're currently working on the life cycle assessment of the Ariane 5 and Soyuz launches. And we work for the European Commission, uh, referring to this morning's presentation, on the thematic strategy on the sustainable use of natural resources. On the experimentation, we've been specifically, specifically involved uh, with five uh, different companies or institutions. Uh, we've worked with Casino and Marc after my presentation will make an exhaustive uh, presentation of what's been done uh, in the last years until today, uh, the uh, national experiment. We've worked for Heineken, uh, Levi's, Orange, which is our main mobile phone operator, and for the ADEM that was before the experiment, working on the gap analysis that exists uh, in terms of available data for a potential large-scale implementation of environmental labeling. So I will go quickly on this one that Sylvain presented uh, this morning. Just a few comments on the whole process or so to say of, you know, the environmental labeling in France today. Uh, you start on the left side uh, of the slide, you've got the ISO 14,000 uh, norms on life cycle assessment. This is the ground for the French norm X30-323, which defines how to uh, assess the environmental footprint of products for uh, environmental labeling. And from this normative document, you will need some basically some PCRs that will be defined by working groups uh, where representatives from the institutions, the companies or NGOs uh, will be present and discuss the specific product category rules uh, for the main categories that have been defined. So the A30-323 has been adopted. We already have the second version the PCRs are in progress. Uh, we have nine of them which are adopted, but we still need a lot more. And in the future, companies will have a database, especially of primary data to be used for the purpose of environmental labeling. And the ADEM will also provide companies with an IT, uh, a web-based assessment tool that companies can use However, they will still keep the possibility to use their own IT assessment tool. So at the moment, both the database and the web-based tool are under construction. And that means specifically, for example, they were not available for the national experimentation. So companies had to make choices which were coherent with the ongoing discussions in the working group but in some cases may have done different choices or choices that will not be the definite ones when we have all the methodological database. In these future PCRs or in the PCRs that have been adopted already, basically uh, the most important things to be defined are the other environmental indicators that should be specific for a product category. 
as Silva mentioned already, obviously carbon footprint is mandatory for all product categories, but depending on which product category we're interested in, uh, we should assess between two and four additional environmental uh, criteria, and the choice of this criteria is left to the working group. Uh, there will be also definitions of what should be the generic data to be used for all products in a specific product category and the specific data that should be collected by the company uh, within its specific supply chain. Two important issues, uh, no harmonized format yet, and nothing so far has been discussed on data verification. As a result, uh, because most of these PCRs uh, were not established and the database was not completed either, uh, on this pilot phase that started on July 1st, you will find no identical initiatives within the group of companies that participated uh, to this experiment. They may have worked together as a group, but two different groups, two different companies have came out with a specific design and in some cases with specific methodological choices because the working group had not come to a, to a definite conclusion on a specific point. Uh, I know it would be difficult to impress you after Danon's presentation, but still we were uh, quite proud that some companies uh, have, so to say, uh, started the experimentation in some kind of pre-industrial uh, process, uh, namely assessing more than 100 and sometimes hundreds of products uh, whereas obviously some other companies will only have assessed a couple of products just to somehow get the taste of what it looks like. So obviously Casino, which has started well before the national experiment, uh, has assessed close to 1,000 products uh, at the moment. Orange, the mobile phone operator, uh, has assessed more than 150 products. And two newcomers, so to say, Conforama, a furniture retailer, and Le Roi Merlin, which is a home improvement brand, which have come recently to this environmental labeling field uh, specifically for the experimentation, have assessed quite large number of products already. There's a large diversity of communication media that's been used by the different companies. Uh, at the beginning, the ministry tried to encourage companies to go as close as possible to the consumer. Uh, that means rather on pack or on the shelf uh, information. Today, there's only a minority of companies who've made such a choice, but still you will find a lot of examples where the environmental information would be provided directly on the packaging. You have an example here on a shirt uh, or on the shelf. This example is taken from Conforama. But of course, you have a lot of communication channels through uh, smartphone applications or websites. And in most situations, companies, in fact, will use some portfolio of communication channels. Uh, they will all use the web, for example. And in addition, they may use uh, smartphone solutions or uh, information uh, uh, directly in the shops, if not on the product itself. Something that was expected, but still interesting to see, is the diversity of communication formats you can have on, for example, only the simple cabot footprints. All those different formats are supposed to provide you with the same information, which is the life cycle-based carbon footprint of your products. And you can see that uh, units will be different, grams, 
kilograms equivalent CO2, kilograms CO2 equivalents. Some companies will refer to climate, others to greenhouse gases, other uh, to, um, to the climate change. So this just demonstrates how diverse can be the communication format if we don't uh, define some common rules uh, for companies or sectors. There's been also largely uh, different choices w on whether we should provide consumers with detailed information and explaining, for example, what would be the environmental indicator for different uh, environmental issues or trying to aggregate uh, these different environmental indicators into some kind of unique score to be easier to understand for consumers. And here you have two examples, one from Levi's and another from Casino. Behind the methodology, you will have exactly the same three environmental indicators, which are water consumption, water eutrophication, and the carbon footprint in this example. Levi's has made a decision to keep separate the three environmental indicators and to provide consumers with absolute numbers, whereas Casino, and Mark will give the reasons uh, in a few minutes, uh, wanted to work with these numerical values to provide the consumer with a comparison with some kind of environmental daily budget uh, in this case, specifically on the food consumption of French people. There's been different choices also whether to go for numerical values that would be communicated directly to consumers or only some kind of relative scale of impact. Uh, the question behind that was mentioned this morning also in, in the questions and answers we had, who and how will define what is a product category? If I have a milk-based dessert, is it a milk-based product or a dessert? How am I going to define the scope of the product category? Then the consequence will be what is the minimum and what is maximum of my scale, etc. So a lot of questions arising from such a choice. Where we can see there's a lot of work to be done from a methodological perspective is water. Uh, as we speak, the working group, which is working specifically on food products in France, has identified that what both water consumption and water pollution should be uh, relevant uh, environmental issues for food products but has not been able to take a decision on what would be the methodology behind those different concepts. For water consumption, the idea would be to adopt the definition of the ISO working group, but we don't have the conclusion yet. And on water pollution, it's not been decided whether we would go for water eutrophication potential or water ecotoxicity, or a mix of the two. And as a result, you have quite a large diversity um, of communication around water, some on water consumption, others on water pollution, and sometimes you don't even know what's behind. So once again, this was expected because the working groups had not defined what should be the final conclusion just demonstrates the urgency to define common rules. So based on this uh, very first months uh, of labeling within this uh, experimentation phase and also based on the learnings that the older companies on this field like Orange or Casino uh, have gathered, I'm just going to give you some ideas or observations. I do not pretend, of course, those are definite conclusions. The conclusions we'll have at least in one year, probably. 
but some preliminary observations that we derived from these first uh, experiments. First of all, when we collect the data, where, whether that would be inside companies or with suppliers, uh, there's a need for control. Uh, we had carried out a pilot project uh, two years ago on 250 products. We had designed, of course, specific questionnaires for the different product, product categories. We had offered the different suppliers a hotline system that they could use to ask us any question they would have. And the result was that only 20% of the data we received was acceptable and directly usable in the assessment tool. In half of the cases, the data collection was not complete, and the remaining 30% presented uh, inconsistencies. So the conclusion is that just that companies are not mature yet on this environmental data processing. Another interesting st story we observed in France is that competitors can work together without any public uh, incentive or without any additional measure. On mobile phones, what happens, and I guess it's the same in every country, you will have competing companies offering the very same mobile phones to consumers. So in France, it happens that Orange started first, then SFR followed some 18 months afterwards and immediately understood that for the whole, for the two initiatives to be credible with consumers, they needed to adjust their respective methodologies. So they agreed quite easily to cooperate so that we would, they would share their primary data they, will, they would share their assessment method, and in the future, probably they'll share also the questionnaires sent to suppliers just to ensure that they present the same results to consumers. We already had some preliminary consumer surveys uh, carried out by these companies, which are started a bit earlier uh, or which organized the service quite quickly after starting the uh, experimentation. Uh, this is, for example, the case of Orange, Conforama, Casino, which also have quite large portfolios of products which present some environmental information. I'm just going to give you rough figures, but basically what it says is that approximately 80% of the customers support such an initiative. 80% of the customers will have a more positive view of the company which took such a decision, probably because they'll make a link to some kind of proactive policy in improving the environmental footprint of the company. But when it comes to multi-criteria environmental information, today, around 20% of, of the customers that are uh, questions will say they understand the different criteria. We have different results, Mark will comment it on carbon footprint only, but when it comes to multiple environmental indicators, only 20% of the people will say, okay, I understand what's behind this different kinds of, of indicators. Of course, Impossible to say whether this has an impact of se on sales. Period of observation is too short. Uh, and we lack potential cross-products comparison. Uh, however, a first comment we can make is that it's already been observed that consumers' interest was stronger when they could establish a relationship between the environmental performance of the product and their purchasing power. And that applies, for example, to energy consumption, water consumption, because there is such a direct relationship, uh, obviously, consumers' interest will be higher. We had some companies which 
had to work with distant suppliers because this is where they are or because they have very long supply chains. It's not been an obstacle. Uh, for example, one of those companies had to question a lot of Chinese suppliers, to name them, and I mean, they just answered those questionnaires uh, because they had answered questionnaires on you know, quality a couple of years ago and were still answering questions on quality. They're starting to fill in questionnaires on social practice a couple of years ago. So for them, that was, okay, it's a new, new topic, new issue uh, where clients or retailers want to question us about, so they just followed the, uh, the evolution of those questions and the rate of response we had from these countries was not significantly lower than what we had with European suppliers. Uh, of course, this has to be prepared, especially with uh, local procurement teams. Uh, Local suppliers on the opposite sometimes did not understand why they received questions on environmental uh, issues because they saw themselves as already some kind of best-in-class companies. What's the, the feedback of internal teams and how should they be uh, engaged in such an initiatives? Uh, there are at least two important internal teams that need to be engaged. One is source, sourcing team, because probably they will be the historical interface with suppliers, so they have to understand what's at stake, what the company is doing this, and why suppliers should participate, even though that might seem as a new, strange idea from the headquarters. The other mostly important team is the sales team, especially with retailers. Uh, we had some difficulties at the moment with Orange because the people selling the phones in the shops, uh, it's a population which has a high turnover, which has incentives on selling products which are not based on the environmental performance of the phones. So there's a difficulty in making sure this sales population makes the effort of understanding uh, the environmental performance of the products for them to explain it to consumers and for consumers to use it as a decision criteria. So it requires training in both cases and maybe if we take the example of Danone, the idea of introducing also concrete incentives sometimes for people in charge of selling these products. And my final observation would be that on the existing initiatives, one of the feedbacks we received is that environmental labeling provides a very good opportunity to engage suppliers beyond existing relationships uh, driven by procurement policy uh, because a retailer or a company will become aware of the environmental footprint that comes from its whole supply chain and sometimes can reconnect with suppliers that will be one step, two step or three steps down the supply chain and will get some better visibility on what happens there and engage in a positive discussions with all these suppliers to improve the environmental footprint of the product. So that's all for the different issues I wanted to share.